lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring, ring with the harmonies of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise. Thank you and welcome to the NAACP Forum. We are Broxton's Choice for Civil Rights News. We're continuing our series with political leaders here in the city of Brockton, and I am so happy tonight to have the president of the city council, Bob Sullivan. Bob, thank you for joining us. Oh, evening. my pleasure. Thank you for the invitation, Tony. You are an extraordinary leader in our city. I know that you're seeking re-election. Tell the citizens, how long have you been on the city council? I was elected in 2005. I was wow. sworn in in 06, so I've been on the council 12 years, and I've served. This is my third time serving as council president over those 12 years. So, wow. Yeah. So you know what people have? Um, they they stop me all the time. They ask me, what's the difference between uh, like the president of the council or a speaker of a council? What exactly does the president of the city council do? So every legislative year, we, um, we meaning the 11 members of the city council, yeah. there's four councils at large, seven wards, a total of 11, um, you elect a member of the, of the body to serve as council president for that year. Unlike the city of Boston, they yeah. do it for two years. Right, right. Um, and and um, really what, what happens in that capacity as council president is um, a couple things. Number one, you chair the finance committee, oh, um, you oh. run the meetings, you also appoint um, your colleagues to serve on subcommittees, ordinance committee, public safety, the traffic. Chairs. Yes, I yep. would appoint those pr people every year. Yep. Um, and also when the mayor uh, is out of the uh, confines of the city of Brockton, the president of the council serves as the acting ma mayor when he or she is not within the city of Brockton. So in the history of the city council, has there ever been an acting, a president council, a president of the council is an acting mayor, and God forbid something has happened to the mayor and they've become mayor? Has that ever happened no, in our city? No, no, it, wow. it's, it's yeah. never happened that way. Um, I, I know uh, on, on some cases where uh, the mayor was out of the out of the uh, actually out of the state, mm. um, certain presidents that were acting mayors needed to you know ratify certain provisions, um, sign paychecks, um, uh, work order stuff like that. But but in terms of um, a, like a, a passing on of yeah. something, no, that that, ha never that hasn't happened. No, no. So Bob, let me ask you the magic question: You're running for re-election? I am. What is right about Brockton? Well, being born and raised in the city of yeah, Brockton, yeah. Uh, Brockton is home. Yep. Uh, Brockton has um, the number one asset is its people. That's right. Um, and, and we need to make sure that um, everybody within the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and beyond realizes that Brockton is the city of champions. Um, and that's an adage that's been going on historically, Marciano and Hagler and Brockton football, but really the people are the champions within the city. Um, but we're a city, so we have issues and we have problems. Um, cities and towns throughout the Commonwealth are dealing with problems. Um, but really, I, I, I really am proud to be on the city council, mm -hmm, as you mm -hmm. know, Tony. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. You know, I do it at great disadvantage. I have three young kids under the age of 10. Um, but it's home, and I want to make a difference. I believe I had made a difference, and I, I continue to make a difference. And um, hopefully the voters will realize that because I am a candidate for, for re-election. So I, I ran into someone the other day, and we were talking, you know, in general about city politics, and, and the woman said that you remember the Janet Jackson song, What Have You Done For Me Lately? Mm. If, the citizen, if a citizen were to come up to you and, and ask you that question, give us some examples of some of the great work you've done. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, a couple things that I've done personally, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm a lawyer by training, um, so I, I've actually done some legal components of it, mm -hmm. but um, the city of Brockton um, adopted Chapter 40R, which is smart growth zoning. Mm -hmm. um, I served three years uh, under mayor units on the planning board as a volunteer, and I understand that um, in order for Brockton to really thrive and move forward, we need to keep our businesses here, but more importantly, attract businesses to help our growth and our tax base. Chapter 40, our smart growth zoning has been a catalyst for development here in the downtown area. Mm -hmm. I was the cheerleader. People said, what are you talking about? Downtown's never going to revitalize. But right. um, Trinity Financial, $30 million investment in the city of Brockton. Um, so that's that's one thing. The streetlight acquisition, Tony. Um, I used to be the town attorney for Randolph, mm -hmm. neighboring community. Mm -hmm. They did it in Randolph. I said, if they could do it in Randolph, we could do it in Brockton. 
Um, Mayor Belzotti was the mayor. I brought it to her, and then Mayor Carpenter succeeded her. And mm -hmm. we purchased every streetlight in the city of Brockton from National Grid for $42,000, okay? Sounds like a decent amount of money, mm -hmm. forty-two grand. Mm -hmm. We saved 550000 year one, 540000 year two. It's reoccurring savings now because we were paying rent on all those streetlights oh. throughout the city right, of Brockton. Right, right. That was phase one. That's a cost uh, containment, fiscal responsibility measure that's really paid off in the city of Brockton. Right. Um, I said to Mayor Carpenter, let's go on to phase two, make, make them LED lighting. LED lighting throughout the city of Brockton. Change out those lights. Ten-year warranty. Some of the crime-ridden areas, you can have heightened light. Mm -hmm. it, it really works. It makes sense. Mayor Carpenter, to his, to his credit, when he came before the council, agreed with me, and it's coming to fruition now. Um, I said, let's take care of the veterans and the seniors. The city of Brockton have never had an ordinance where a volunteer program is enacted. I brought that forward. It was ratified unanimously by the council. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and now senior citizens and veterans can do volunteer work to help create a deduction on their real estate tax. It makes sense. Everybody's right. hurting financially. Right, right, right. Something I did last year relative to blight, it drove me crazy, Tony, driving around the city seeing these parking shopping carts. People are stealing them, taking them away from Which shops. Is larceny. Shop. A lot of people don't realize it's it, Absolutely, it is. It's, it's larceny, a felony. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's over. Those are, those are expensive. Very expensive. And they yeah. were scattered throughout the city of Brockton. That's, and it drove me crazy. And right. I get constituents calling me, you know, seven wards, 28 precincts saying, we need to address this. It's, it's, it's really a public safety issue. Um, I worked on drafting with our legal counsel a, a shopping cart ordinance mm. that got passed last year, um, and there's a fining system in place right now. So you are seeing less and less of these shopping carts throughout the city of Brockton because the people that own them, which are the shopping malls and the actual uh, grocery stores, right. if they don't take care of their personal asset, the shopping cart, the city of Brockton can either find them or actually scrap those. So the ordinance, and um, we're going to jump on yeah. the ordinance enforcement in a couple of minutes, but but on the ordinance, it, so the enforcement mechanism is on the shop owners, so not what, necessarily the person. So, so if I'm pushing the cart down the street, uh, is a Brockton cop going to stop me and say, what are you doing? They, they, they haven't, I think. Yeah, um, yeah probably for many reasons, probably manpower and right. woman power, but right. um, it is it is theft. Um, but really, the onus is on the owner of that shopping they cart. They should be keeping them in their parking lot. Well, what lot they have to do now under the yep. ordinance is they have to register the shopping carts with the city of Brockton. Each uh, one? Yes. They wow. have to say, you know, we at Shaw's, we in Stop Shop, we at Market Basket yeah. have X amount. Yeah. Um, we have to label them. It's in the ordinance. It has to be labeled oh, okay. property of. And then when they're found throughout the city, um, the city of Brockton, um, we'll go and acquire it and then bring them to um, Oak Hill Way uh, and leave them there, notify them in writing, and they have a certain amount of time where they have to come and retrieve it. If they don't, they lose it, and, and the city of Brockton can scrap it. So it's just stuff like that. I mean, you, the ordinance is really um, right, right. catered to our day-to-day -day, uh, living here in the mm -hmm, city of Brockton. Mm -hmm. So those are just some things that I personally have done, but I, I bring them forward. It's all 11 of the city councils working together to say, hey, Sullivan, that's a good idea. We support it, or let's tweak it a little. Right. Um, so over the 12 years on the city council, I, I've done a lot of things I think that have done good uh, and will continue to do good. Um, and, you know, I'm hoping that I get reelected to continue that process. I mean, um, you know, much like you, you know, we stay here because this is home. Yes, right? so we so live we here, we Brockton. work here. Right. Um, a lot of people that I went to Brockton High School with, when we graduated from college, they're gone, they're gone and right. they're not coming right. back. So we take care of those that are here. And I listen, we appreciate that. And again, we appreciate these ordinances. So I'm going to ask you the question that people have been asking me. You sound more like a mayor. Why are you running for mayor? <laughs> no, I, and I, now remember, these conversations no. are like in the yeah. living room. You're in my living yeah, room. I'm in the living room right, right, right now. That's right. So, <laughs> Tell the audience, tell the community, you really sound, I mean, someone that's looking at quality of life issues in the city, uh, clearly that's, you know, that can be a councilman's responsibility, but you've gotten in the weeds, Bob, you really have. Why aren't you running for mayor? You know, I, I uh, it's an honor and privilege to be a public servant, mm -hmm. right? You mm -hmm. serve the public, that's mm -hmm. why you do it. Uh, and you do it, again, a great detriment to your family, you but do. you yep. do it for a reason. Um, I've been fortunate to um, have uh, been elected and re-elected, and, and you know I've won elections. Number some number uh, one. Yeah, I've yeah. topped the ticket as yeah, they say. The ticket, um, right. But I've also lost. I ran for state rep, and I lost by 13 votes. Right, so right. I mean, you win, you lose. But right. um, I, I'm asked that question, Tony, probably every day. Why aren't you? Right. Um, and, and my truthful heart to heart answer is my family. You know, I have a five-year-old, a seven-year-old, and a ten-year-old. Exactly. And, and right now, even though I serve 
the whole city of Brockton as a councilor at large, and it's a privilege. Yep. Um, and I respect and really honor what a mayor's role is. Mm -hmm. um, right now, it's just timing for me and my family. It's not the right time. It's not to say in the future. We never know. And um, you know, but it's it's an honor that you would consider that. And people ask those yeah, questions. Yeah, people ask. Yeah. And, they, and that's that is actually the number one question. Uh, when it got out that you would be here to make sure that I asked that question. Yep. And then the second question is, is that you, people see you in the council, quite frankly, you're tough. You're very tough. Uh, and what is your relationship with the mayor? Well, I, I guess I'll, that's what people, because yeah, yeah, I mean, you can't really, you know, yeah, I, you I see mean, you do the parliamentary stuff, but. Yeah, I mean, un under the formal government in the city of Brockton, if yep. you looked at the charter, mm -hmm. it's a form B type of government. Right. And what that means is, the, the forefathers that drafted the charter for the city of Brockton said, we're a form B, we're a strong council, weak mayor, former government. Is that true, though, in Brockton? But, but it's a misnomer. It it's is. on the books right. because, right. really, if you think about it, we're part-time public servants. Correct. The mayor is the CEO and administrator of the city right. of Brockton. He, in this case, Mayor Carpenter, um, works on a daily basis as the mayor. Um, it's the mayor's budget. The city council can approve it, disapprove mm -hmm. it, ratify it. Um, you know, my relationship is that I respect the role of mayor. I don't agree with Mayor Carpenter on many things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I, I didn't appreciate his first duty when he when he beat Mayor Balzotti was to sue me mm -hmm. as the council president mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. to sue the council. I would think that that's a waste of taxpayers' money to do that. Mm -hmm. I would think that's not the best approach when you start your administration. However, he at this time is the mayor of Brockton. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I respect the position. Um, uh, Mayor Copper and I can disagree. We can agree to agree, um, but there's certain things that I um, stand on my principles, and uh, really my integrity and my morals and my family and reputation are really important to me. Um, but I, I, you know, I, what you see is what you get with me. Right, right. And, uh, and, and people it, might say I'm firm, but when you are running uh, yep. Robert's Rules procedure, right. you need to make and sure the meeting. Yeah, right, you right, need to make right. sure the meeting is run appropriately. And professionally, right. and respectfully, and you've done, and you've clearly you've done that. So, I, the other issues that are, are, of course, that have been coming about, is the uh, revenue here in the city of Brockton. How do we maximize a revenue? Uh, the two and a half levy. What's your position on maximizing that? Well, I think I think again, that's the threshold we can go up right, to. Right. Um, you know, can you uh, explain to the audience what this all means? What I'm talking about. So, when, when comes... Proposition Two and a Half was passed, um, it was ratified at the state and Senate, and it's a law in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And what it allows for yearly taxes, municipalities, right. cities, or towns within the Commonwealth to go up to two and a half percent. Um, that's the max. They right. can't go over that. You could go under it, but you can't. You can't increase that. Um, in this case, you know, many times mayors, this mayor and previous mayors, mm -hmm. need to do that because, you know, you need to pay for um, a city to operate. You right. need to pay for the schools, right. public safety, fire trucks, roads, quality of life issues. Mm -hmm. um, and again, to do that, of course, um, real estate taxes are going up, mm -hmm. you know, your water bills are going up. I mean, unfortunately, you have to pay to make sure that the city is run in an appropriate way. Um, but at the same time, you also have to look at Brockton is a community that is um, really hardworking individuals. My yeah. dad's a retired teacher. My mom's a retired nurse, you know, paycheck to paycheck. Right. Um, and, and people are just trying to get by. And I said this many times. I get calls, not as much lately, but I have got calls in the past from some seniors in Brockton that will say, Bob, do I buy my medicine this week? or do I buy my food? And that's a reality, and right. that's scary, and that's sad, and that shouldn't be. Right. So, um, you know, I- th They're homeowners yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and right. you know, I think, I think right. at the end of the day, um, we have to take care of the people that we serve and our constituents. Um, you know, thank you to you. You're a great public servant for I, the, I the students that. over there. I uh, at Southeastern Regional, 85% yeah. are from Brockton. Right. Um, but I think at the end of the day, listen, People are just trying to get by paycheck to paycheck. So we need to think outside the box, such as the streetlight acquisition. Right. I mean, that was a huge thing. Five hundred. That's is. a half a million dollars. So, and that's year to year. So I think at the end of the day, we have to figure out how can we take this massive pie, which in this case, we just finished a budget, $404 million pie. Right. School's about half of it, school right. side. And how do, we, how do we make sure that the residents, the taxpayers, the constituents that we represent are best served by that? And unfortunately right now, taxes are increasing. 
I would say this, and I have said this, the city of Brockton does not get its fair share from the state, That's from the true. Commonwealth. Right. We don't get our fair share reimbursement for transportation for kids. We don't get our lottery funds. There is a potential lawsuit. We've won before mm -hmm. the Robbie case, uh, Robin Webby case, McDuffie you case, supporting Hancock the lawsuit? case. I, I think we need to. Yeah, I think yeah, we yeah. need to because yeah. Brockton's not getting its fair share, and it needs to uh, in terms of making sure that our public schools, which is a huge asset right. nationally, these, these boys and girls at this schools and the educators that educate them, they're excelling. They're going to Ivy League schools. They're going into the service. They're doing this and that. But at the end of the day, we need to make sure that we take care of them. And right. that's one of the duties as a city council, school committee meeting, or mayor. So when you look, so at, at, you know, I asked you about the right, and then I'm a little bit concerned about our conversation about the wrong. This crime perception drives me crazy about Brockton. Do we have a crime problem in your estimate? I think there's a crime problem everywhere, okay. everywhere, throughout yep. the Commonwealth. And, and I do think Are that- Are we worse off than other urban um, cities? In my humble opinion, no. Thank you. In my humble opinion, um, we are dealing with a drug tsunami, an epidemic. Absolutely. And, and right. unfortunately, crime is connected most of the time with drug use. Right. So we need to deal with that. And a lot of people are saying, well, these homeless people are coming to Brockton. Listen, if, if you're a homeless person, you have a story. You right. didn't choose to be homeless, so we need to figure out how to help those individuals, those That's men right. and women. That's right. um, do we have a problem with crime? I think we have a, a really more of a problem with perception in the media. You know, if you turn on the yeah, news, that's what I wrote down. Tony, right. You turn on the news, Brockton, Brockton, Brockton. It's not the good Brockton. So, Bob, it's what the do bad we do? Brockton. What do we do about the perception? You, you've heard me speak, and I go around, ending most of my speeches with. Say something great about our city. Say something. You wouldn't go around talking about your house. Oh, my house is a piece of crap. My house is a piece of crap. We need to, you know, I, you know, I get people even that. Just say something great about our city. How are we going to deal with this perception, though? Well, what, I think, what are some of our yeah, steps? Yeah, I think, I think we have to, uh, and I, before I came here, I was yeah. just at a crime, uh, at the New Life Temple down on Nielsen Street, a crime um, uh, forum. I think we need to figure out um, best practices. Yes. And we need to also for lack of a better word, steal ideas from other communities. Not because, be afraid to do no, that. No, not right. be afraid at all. If it's a proven workable right. event, right. Let's, let's, let's collaborate and, and, and really, really work to make it work here in Brockton. And I think, you know, if you look at other cities, okay, you can say Quincy, New Bedford, Lowell, right. Lawrence, you know, they're all dealing with the same thing. But Easton's dealing with it. Bridgewater's dealing with it. There's crime everywhere. So ours is magnitude because we're a city. Mm. But at the end of the day, we have great men and women that put the line, lives on the line every day, right? The police, the mm -hmm. fire, EMS. Absolutely, um, absolutely. But also it's, it's, it's neighborhood approach. Where I grew up in Ward 2 on Wellington Street, my mom and dad still live there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If I did something wrong, my neighbor was going to tell my mother and father. Okay. Those days are long Those gone. Are gone. Those, days Those are, are gone. Those are gone. Yeah. So, so yeah. how do we do it? Well, we also have to bring a mentoring system back. We also we have a great boys and girls club, but it also starts in the classroom. You know, we have teachers that are not getting paid a lot of money right. on the on the bottom level teachers that are really trying to educate and teach our young. And I'm talking K, first grade, second Absolutely. grade, third grade. Right. Um, but again, when I grew up, I was fortunate to have a mother and a father at home. That, that's not a reality in this day and age. There's a lot of hardworking single families. Um, so we need to just figure out best practices, um, what doesn't work so well, and at the end of the day, work together in collaboration. Put ego aside. That's, right. a, that's right. not going right. to benefit anybody. So is it unsafe to say politically that parents also need, parents have a huge stake in this to make sure that they're influencing their children correctly? Uh, absolutely. I, I think that, you know, I, as a clergyman, I have these conversations with parents, but I don't hear many politicians saying that parents need to do their part. See, I'm well. a parent. I'm a yeah. father, <laughs> father, husband, concerned resident. That's it. And that's I just it, happen right. to be a politician. <laughs> right, right, but, right. But right. I don't even consider myself that. I mean, every yeah. two years I ask, we humbly ask for your vote of confidence and bring me back to the council. Right. Um, but when the day comes when I'm not back to the council, I'm still a husband, I'm still a father, I'm still Absolutely. a resident. So um, I don't think it's a bad topic. It needs to be discussed. And again, if we all work together, okay, it doesn't matter, you know, race, religion, sexual orientation, work together. We're all Brocktonians right. and try to figure out how do we foster this and how do we develop it. And, and talk is cheap. You have to That's act. Right. That's right. Um, but if you don't have the talk, you don't have the action. So you've got to figure out what's the nexus. This is a start right here. Absolutely. People are going to watch this show and say, you know what? He looks good in that tie right there, <laughs> but they had good conversation in the living room. In the living room. In the exactly. living room. So let me just, let's, let's go to uh, uh, crime procession. Let's stay a little bit on public safety. What can we do? You've been on the council for a while to finally deal with this issue. 
of having people of color that are superior officers from Brockton Police. It seems like we're way behind the eight ball. Have you thought about something like this? Well, I have, personally. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. You know, and as a city councilor, I don't have anything to do with promotions right. other than um, when the appointment comes, we can ratify the promotion. Um, so in terms of, you know, where you're going to see people of color move up the ranks, it's a long time coming, mm -hmm. and, and I don't have the answer, but I also don't have the authority. Right. Uh, you know, no, we get that. If, we if get I that. was the mayor, maybe I'd do things differently. Right. Um, and then you, know, you have to work with your fire chief and your police chief to figure it out. But, um, but, you're, but on the record, on the record you're, you're believing in diversity for our, our public safety officers and for the fire department or whomever. And teachers. Oh, I, and I, teach, I, I, and it, it, we haven't even gotten well, to that. I mean, exactly. And yeah. I'm, I'm a son of a Brockton High teacher retired. There you go. So, there I mean, you go. I think, Tony, yeah. at the end of the day, listen. We all come, come, came to the city. My, my grandparents came here from Ireland yeah. okay, to work in the factories. Right. Um, my parents met on Main Street to send a theater. Yeah. So yeah. my ties are here, my roots are here, yes. my wife's roots are here. They, they, my, my wife's grandfather started a little shoe, Louise's shoe was a shoe factory. Wow. So we're here, okay? Right, right, right. Um, but I think at the end of the day, you know, we look around, and it was a good thing when Shayna Bonds joined the council. Yeah. And it was a good thing when Moses Rodriguez and Jay Stewart. Yeah, um, yeah. It was a long time coming. Wayne McAllister, we just, yeah, thanks right. to you and Councilor Staninsky and the you. Diversity Commission, a wonderful honor for a wonderful man. Yes, yes. Um, true definition of public servant, Wayne McAllister. Most certainly. True definition. Most certainly. But we need to look at that, learn from that, and try to figure out. This election coming up now, we have some real quality people running. Some good, great people running. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. there's going to be open discussion, um, and there's going to be debate, and that's healthy, and it's helpful, and um, I look forward to it. I think it's, I think it's going to be good for Brockton. Are we going in the right direction in terms of home, in terms of combating the home? Well, let me. When I'm not saying the, the homeless population, but combating homelessness in terms of providing the necessary social services in terms of what the municipal government can do. Are we doing our best? What do you think about the city in terms of working with the homeless? Yeah, I mean, I think I think, we, I think you can always you can always do better. Yeah. Okay. Do you have any I thoughts said, about? Well, well, yeah. I I would hope that the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and Brockton's mm. fortunate. We have three state reps and one senator right. that represent Brockton. Right. Right. We're, we're unique in that. Right. That you know, we have Jerry Cassidy, Michelle Dubois, Claire Cronin, and Mike Brady. Um, you know, Cassidy. Dubois and Brady served on the city council. They understand local legislation. Right, right. Um, um, Claire Cronin's um, uncle, great uncle, was a mayor. So there's a lot of connections here to Brockton. We need to get more money from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts for our schools and to also deal with public safety and also to deal with homeless, right. also deal with drug addiction problems, you know. So can we do better? We can do it. Absolutely do better. I think we're doing some good steps. Um, Lieutenant Lenihan from Brockton PD, um, he's really charged to he, deal with, he, with he's homeless. He's out there, he's doing he's the streets. He's exceptional. Yeah, um, with him. You yep, know, yep. I, I filed a resolve last year with Councilor Azak from Ward 7, Shirley Azak, um, and we, we actually brought um, some pastors before the city council um, to talk, talk about how we should um, I remember. address it, right. deal with it, try to tackle a problem. Um, you know, I know a lot of people have called me and said, listen, this panhandler homeless guy up near Westgate Mall is driving me crazy. Mm -hmm. My thought is, listen, if that gentleman or that woman is out there panhandling, first of all, they need it, okay? Mm -hmm. But we need to talk. We need to figure out what is the best way well, that, to deal with this. Right, so I used to do homeless, uh, homelessness prevention uh, in Boston, and one of the things is, is that, my, at least in my perspective, have we taken a census of exactly reconciling exactly what's going on? And typically what you do is you just go up there and, and do a survey because right. they have health needs, they have a lot of needs, so we can begin in, um, building some sort of a program. But you're right, the work that the pastors have done, and you did the resolve, that was actually great. It was a great reviews on that, so we thank you for that. Oh, yes, but now, we need to do more. We do. We need we to do, do more. So let me ask you a, a, one, of the, uh, one of my final questions coming up. Are you interested in, in changing the term of office for the city councilors and the mayor? Well, have you thought about it? You know, I, I, I've thought about it in the sense that if you want to just say, it, 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 probably, it would probably never happen, but in reality it could. Yeah. The mayor, all 11 city councilors, and all seven school committee could be wiped out in one election. Okay, so we're not staggered terms. We all run every That's two years. Right, so right. in theory, right. you could have a fresh slate of everybody. Right, so right. all that experience and, and proven dedication could go. 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 Right, it right. could go. Right. So, you know, I know when... My colleague, Councilor at Large Falwell, served as mayor. He was the last four. four years. He was the last four. And yeah. then um, the voters decided to change that. Um, you know, I, I just think that it needs to probably be um, studied. I think that, you know, 
Um, every two years Are is you very willing to difficult. sponsor Window well, Next to do a study? I, I, well, I, I don't have a problem doing a study. I, okay. think, I think we need to figure out, number one, is there an appetite within the city of Brockton to make a change? Mm -hmm. Because really, mm -hmm. the voters decide that. That's right, that's right. You know, you could say there's, there's no term limits, but the term limit is the voter deciding, listen, we're not going to reelect you. Correct. But I do think that it's expensive to have elections every two years um, for the city. Uh, you know, you pay the poll workers and right. all that, um, and and prepare the ballots and stuff like that. But but I also understand why the forefathers decided and the voters decided. Uh, four years is probably too long. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, so you have a four-year term for for president of the United States. So I don't I don't know what the happy answer is. Oh, you don't. Okay. Maybe it's right, three right. years. I don't know. Um, but also maybe like other municipalities do staggered terms. Right. Maybe maybe do staggered terms. That way there is no chance of a, a whole wipeout of elected officials. Um, I don't know. I think we should really have further talk. Um, there will be um, some new counselors coming in, without question. Right. Um, Wood Fork has Councilor Stanensky is not seeking re-election, right. and Councilor right. at Large Bonds is not seeking re-election. Right. Right. And who knows how everything shapes up. So, um, you know, anything that's pending now that's not passed by the end of December gets wiped out. Oh, it, it doesn't does. carry to the next legislative session. Okay. Um, so, you know, we we could, you know, if I am fortunate enough to be re-elected, I'd be happy to. Uh, to work, I wouldn't be the president again. It would be somebody else. Give that other person, man or woman, a chance to do it. Um, but I think it needs to be discussed and kind of examined and figure out what's the best practice for the city of Brockton going forward. Again, look at other communities, like communities, same type of population. Um, but staggered terms make sense, I think. Bob, take two minutes. Tell us, why should you be reelected? Give us contact information. Yes, no, well, first of all, thank you. Um, I, I, uh, I'm Robert Sullivan, a proudly serve as counselor at large here in the city of Brockton. Call me on my cell phone. If you have any questions, You're giving ideas, out cell phone? I always do. <laughs> if you want to criticize me, that's fine. That's why I serve. He's giving me out the cell 508 phone. 508-846-1208. <laughs> okay. Wait a minute. 508-846-1208. 1208. I don't um, think I had that. <laughs> that's the magic number. Oh, okay. but by all means, it's on my it's on my card as it well. Is it? Oh, okay. absolutely. All right. All I mean, right. Um, I, I'm a candidate for re-election. Yes, sir. I, I would ask for your vote for the preliminary and, and again in November if I'm fortunate enough to make it there. Um, I have experience. I'm a lawyer. I have an MBA. But more importantly, I'm, I'm home. Brockton's my home. So I'm hoping that the voters consider me, again, to serve proudly as their counselor at large. I have a website, um, www.electrobertsullivan.com, and I, I look forward to One the One more campaign. time on the website. Yeah, electrobertsullivan.com. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. Yeah, but I got, I got, well, we got, we got, we got <laughs> a hot living room. Well, yeah, we, hey, where we are the snacks? Room, so, huh? uh, <laughs> all right, so let me ask you: this, LeBron James or Kyrie Irving? What's your position? <laughs> well, I want, I want, I want Kyrie to come to the Celtics. You right? do? Oh, you do want? Him. Oh, I you want do. Kyrie you to do. the Celtics. Okay, okay. Now, can he work with Isaiah? I don't know. You don't know. I don't know. Okay. And we'd have to give up uh, at least the Brooklyn pick, probably the Lakers pick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but you're willing to do it. I coach basketball at Brockton Community Schools. Okay. I'm not a good coach, but I love the sport of basketball. I could talk all day about it. Um, <laughs> okay. I think the king is going out to L.A. after he finishes up with Cleveland. Do you believe that? I do. You do believe I that? I do. I think he's home. He got his title, and he's heading he's, out he's west. Out, he's I out, think he's so. Gone. I think all right. so. All right. Bob Sullivan, people, <laughs> president of the Brockton City Council, joined us here at the NAACP Forum, considering uh, continuing our political uh, series, interviewing candidates. Moving forward, we'll be interviewing two candidates uh, for uh, election to the city council, and then we'll be moving on to the wards and then to the school committee. This is all about bringing forth folks that are a part of our political process to enhance our community. And Bob, we're just going to ask you one more time just to give us contact information. We have one minute left. 508-846-1208 is my cell phone. And www.electrobertsullivan.com is my website. And do you have, um, do you guys, uh, do you, you don't have like a campaign office or anything like that? No, no, not on the local. So level. if you want volunteers, they would just call. Just if anybody wants to help out, yeah. um, by all means, call me. Are and, you on Facebook? I am on Facebook on as Facebook. well. Okay. I am. Yeah, I am. Yeah. Okay. And the elections are nonpartisan. Nonpartisan. In the city of Democrat, Brockton. Republican, unenrolled, independents. We all we all are looking for the same and voters. We always say basic services should have no party associated with it. This has been Bishop Tony Branch. We thank you for joining us today at the NAACP Forum. We look forward to seeing you or seeing us at the next segment. Have a pleasant evening. Good night.